Good evening. Thanks for being at the Thursday, March 28th, Northampton Planning Board public hearing. We always begin our public hearing with any comments uh, about issues that are not on our agenda. So if anyone in the public has a comment on an item that is not on tonight's March 28th agenda, feel free to come to the podium. And if there are no comments, we'll move into our 7 p.m. hearing, which is a continuation of a public hearing on a proposed zoning ordinance amendment to standards governing large-scale solar arrays. The proposal is to eliminate the current prohibition against removal of more than 25,000 board feet of timber and create standards for large-scale ground-mounted solar arrays that result in more than five acres of tree removal. Um, before we open up our hearing, um, I do just want to mention that some of the folks here on the planning board were not able to be present at the February meeting, um, and those of us who were not were able to watch the video of that hearing, so we are up to speed on things. Um, I do also want to enter kind of into the broad record a comment from um, George Coet, who's not able to be here um, regarding this. He did read this language um, and wanted to indicate his support for the revised language. Um, to summarize what um, what was made available to us by the city solicitor, and I think do planning board members have the copies that Carolyn just gave up? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so we have an existing ordinance. There is uh, an effort to do an amendment to that ordinance. There was discussion and input on that amendment. It was then further reviewed and further um, edited and changed. So there is some language that um, is newer than even the, the first round of changes. Um, broadly, there's a change to uh, allow uses, uh, solar uses by right in a number of our residential districts. Um, there's a specific change to allow uh, ground-mounted solar by right in our industrial districts instead of allowing them by special permit. Um, there were some, a number of restrictions that have been deleted from the ordinance, and Carolyn can enumerate those, um, but there are a number of bulleted restrictions that were proposed to be eliminated. Um, and then the most substantial change was uh, to require site plan approval for um, large-scale ground-mounted solar uh, in our RR, SR, URA, URB, and WSP zones. Um, and the, some of the significant changes um, include or address projects resulting in more than three acres of canopy removal and require the submission of some technical scientific information about uh, carbon that's sequestered, about the impact of the project relative to its benefits, um, about the type and relevant habitat that would be lost, um, and analyses showing carbon neutrality over the first 10 years of the operation. Things that did not change were points related to the percent of the property that would be protected from tree clearing. So that's 50% at least that would be protected from tree clearing and future development uh, for the duration of a solar arrays operation. And then uh, the requirement that beyond the first three acres of canopy removed, that stumps would remain. Um, would folks on the planning board like me to read any of these specific points again or questions? Can I, can I ask? I don't understand at all what you just handed out, Carolyn. I, I read it two pages, right? Yeah, yeah. actually it's front and back, so it's two and a half. Oh, maybe that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at the back of the second page and it was blank. I didn't know if it was now, wait a minute. <laughs> so basically what you have, so what happened was at the public hearing on February 11th, there was a lot of discussion from the public about <coughs> concerns um, about addressing um, the removal of at that point it was proposed to go from a hard cap of the removal of 25,000 board feet of timber to something that's more understandable so an acreage amount of timber that's removed and at, in that proposal the proposal was for um, a five acre cap um, and then there was a lot of discussion from um, public and city solicitor about cons um, one, on the one hand, concerns about the fact that the ordinance wasn't addressing sort of a broader range of impacts that tree removal would have. And then at the same time, the city solicitor was um, um, suggesting that um, without um, specific criteria by which the planning board 
could review or look at um, these modifications that relate to um, the health, safety, and welfare of the community that um, an ordinance that sort of put any restrictions on um, solar uh, may be challengeable in court because there's a gray area for these large-scale systems that um, um, as to whether they're exempt from any restrictions throughout the Commonwealth. And so there's been a lot of debate throughout the Commonwealth about whether the large-scale systems really fall into that exemption that was created in the 1970s for homeowners to put solar on their roofs. Um, so what you have now, which um, uh, um, I drafted a revision to what you saw to try to address public comment about impacts to the broader ecology and habitat, as well as to try to address some of the city solicitor's concerns about <clears throat> um, wanting to make direct correlation between what we're trying to, information we're trying to get, and also how to direct these solar installations as it relates to also protecting the community's um, health, safety, and welfare, because that's the way you can stand on any kind of restriction is if you have a solid connection there. So he, um, and then at the same time, because there was concern that maybe five acres was too much, that I, um, the draft in front of you is reducing it down to three acres. And um, a sidebar about that is I came up with three acres because the two projects that we have um, that have been permitted, we have three projects that have been permitted. One at the landfill, two trees were taken down. So that was all on, you know, landfill. So the other two projects, um, on Park Hill, one on Park Hill Road, they got up to just under 25,000 board feet at two acres. The Ryan Road project um, was um, around three acres for 25,000 board feet. Now they took many more board feet than that, but they're based on their assessment of the trees that came down, three acres was about the number where they hit 25,000 board feet. So um, that's where I came up with the three acres um, for that. And clearly there's a range, it depends on the type of tree, trees there are. And yeah, um, um, so that's where the three acres came from. <clears throat> and then the other big piece was sort of including this requirement that the applicant provide an assessment of the quality of the habitat that's, um, would be disturbed um, and and then address um, or, or avoid those um, impacts to the extent they could. So they would have to bring that information to you so that you would evaluate it. Um, and so that's what you have in front of you is, is that's sort of the bulk of the changes. And, um, you know, city solicitors reviewed this and, um, and is comfortable with the language as is presented. What's interesting is, you know, we've gone back and forth about the you know, special permit and site plan, and it seems like this is a site plan, but then there's also this provision for the board to make a finding about impacts on health, safety, and welfare. So there's this added layer of protection, it seems, right. to allow the board to ask for very detailed scientific information, evaluate that information, and then make a finding. So it yeah. isn't, as I'm reading this, this is not just a checklist of, yes, you met, you met the frontage, you met the height, right. you know, that, that there is this sort of extra layer of review that mm -hmm. if, you know, if the city solicitor is comfortable with that, I think that's that's very positive for yeah. us to be able to, to evaluate these projects. Um, so uh, before I open it up to public comment, actually, we will open it up to public comment, but I, I do want to, um, should I read this into the record? We received oh. one comment um, via email. Yes, uh, today. today. Right. Um, do I need to read the whole thing? You, don't need to. you can summarize Okay, it. so we did receive a letter um, regarding this proposed ordinance from John Skibiski, Hastings Heights um, in Northampton. And his recommendation is that we take a balanced approach and evaluate both the benefits of solar systems um, and the detriment to woodland and forest land. And so um, that's his recommendation, and, uh, and that's it. So, 
Um, we'll entertain other comments from the public. If you have a comment, please come up to the podium and tell us your name and your address. Hi, everybody. I'm so short that it actually impedes my view of you. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Did I do Fine. disturb it's something? Okay. okay. No worries. I'm Lily Lombard. I live at 39 Monroe in Northampton. I am also chair of the Northampton uh, Public Shade Tree Commission. I was here a month ago um, during the first hearing. Um, during uh, And this feels a little deja vu in that at the time, um, the only difference is we had two or three days to consider the revised ordinance. And, and this time, we, uh, I personally had about three hours, um, which is why the room is not filled with other people, because they just simply don't know that this is out there. So my request is very similar to my one, my one before, which is a further continuation of this topic. I, I ask you to please not take a vote um, in favor or against this piece, because I feel like there is always momentum that comes out of you know um, a, a decision that is made by a public body um, that makes it harder for the public to kind of insert their opinion on at a, at a later date. And um, I feel like at an early juncture, the public has a right to review this. Uh, there's I I'm not judging at all the quality of this work. I think there's been really good thought um, inserted into the the changes, and I'm glad to see that. Um, Alan is, you know, has Alan and Carolyn have come up with a um, a, uh, a a draft that seems to meet both the um, the legal and the uh, you know planning needs of the city. Um, having said that, I feel like there is a broad public body out there. Um, the room was quite full last um, last time you met of people who are taking a particular interest at this point in time in the intersection between um, solar uh, advancement and tree protection. Uh, it, that's played out um, it, especially keenly in Western Massachusetts, where between um, biomass production and, and, the, um, and solar production, there is tremendous pressure on our, our trees and our ecological systems. And we wanna make sure that we are um, you know, taking the time that we need to, to protect them as uh, fully as we can. Um, and you know, Dave will probably speak as a member of Climate Action Now, whose subcommittee is, is dedicated to this very topic. So um, I, I, I iterate that um, I, I'm supporting this process. I know the public would love to weigh in, and I ask that you consider giving the public more time to look at this draft. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> my name is. Uh, Dave Reutman. I live at 575 Bridge Road, Unit 92 in Florence, the Gables Condominiums. Lily was able to get through to me at uh, 5 o'clock tonight. My wife had already taken the car, so I walked in. And uh, the reason I did is that this is such a critical issue. So um, what I'm going to uh, provide in, in a minute or two or three is just uh, some insights on, on why it's so important. Um, I don't know how many of you attended the uh, town hall that uh, Senator Markey led a few nights ago. Uh, you know, uh, everybody around the state looks to Northampton as uh, a leader in this area. So your decision on this is, is really going to be very important. Um, it's not an easy decision. Uh, you know that. We know that. Um, the work that you did that was uh, summarized uh, by Ms. Mish and um, Ms. Pope. I think it's really good. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read it. I just heard about it at, at five o'clock. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of a group in Climate Action Now called uh, Farms, Forests, and Food Systems Work Group. And so, as Lily mentioned, we are making a very focused study of this issue. Um, we really um, see we're so proud of, of living in Northampton and because as you've read in you know some letters to the editor this is really a controversial topic I'm so pleased that you reference in the in the new draft the importance of science based um, and it, it, it's just it looks like it's in the right direction um, I'll, I'll just close by saying I, I share Lily's concern you you will you will gain a lot you will gain a lot in terms of the quality 
of the ultimate ordinance, um, the reputation as a leader of Northampton, and uh, how you are experienced by your constituents, uh, uh, we the citizens. I want to thank you for your serious work on this, and uh, I look forward to uh, learning of your decision. Thank you. Would you like to make a comment? Okay, for a couple of minutes. <laughs> um, we'll keep the public hearing open for some period of time yes. as we discuss this. Uh, so a couple of couple of perspectives. Um, you know, I was one of the people who wasn't able to be here, but did watch the video, and you know, there was some amount of, of interest. Um, you know, I, I don't know that there was from watching it. I don't know that there was a, a an overwhelming amount of. You know, people who were here. There were, you know, eight or nine people who spoke. Um, oh, but the room was packed. The room was yeah. packed. Yeah. Um, <coughs> out of all of our thirty thousand residents, you know, so I, I do think it's an important issue. But you know, I also personally, I don't know <coughs> that um, that us voting on this tonight ends the process. You know, my understanding is that this would go to to city council, uh, legislative affairs, and community resources. Is that right? Um, it's just now in legislative matters. So legislative matters won't take it up till they um, have a recommendation from the planning board. So this is your piece is just recommending the city council. Right. Then the legislative matters continue their public hearing, and that's April eighth. Um, both of the continuations were noticed at that February eleventh meeting. Um, so that this you know both of those were on the calendar from that point forward. Right. Right. So, I mean, I, I just, I don't know that, I don't feel very strongly that if we were to make a recommendation to City Council, that that does not end the process for the right. public, you know, that there are additional and multiple opportunities for people to be making their voices heard, and, um, which makes a lot of sense. The other thing, uh, just, you know, to mention, I think, for everyone as the reminder, is we know that, you know, what we're talking about an ordinance, not we're not talking about a specific project, you know. So I think the most important thing was that 12 month look back and making sure that we're not in a situation that, like with what happened on Ryan Road. And right. that's, yeah. you know, kind of closing that loophole as quickly as possible is, is you know, a, a gift that we can give right now and still be able to evaluate this ordinance and make amendments or changes, but, you know, to not you know, I think part of our job and the job of zoning is risk mitigation and just making sure that we're not in any kind of situation where we might experience some, you know, some negative impact. Um, what are other folks feeling? That's how I felt during the last meeting. Is that the most important thing was the was the look that look back uh, and everything else. I guess I just sort of. The, the other details didn't seem as important to me because I sort of felt like um, city government would take, would take care of it mm -hmm. um, because we have good city government. Um, so that that ability and as, as, and uh, and as you said, as soon as we can put that in, the better. Mark, thoughts? So I wasn't here at the last meeting to watch the video. Um, on double speed, right? Exactly. Right. Your voices are very high. <laughs> um, uh, so no, I, I, you know, on the one hand, I'm wondering what's what's the downside of continuing this for a couple of weeks. Um, I was surprised that there weren't, based on the number of people at the first meeting, surprised that that the room wasn't full again. Right. But that night it was continued, and it was continued to tonight at a specific time, and so. Um, the knowledge was the, the awareness was, was could have been there uh, for those who were looking for it. And to your, if, if this if this ended the process tonight, I'd be uncomfortable yeah. because I wasn't at the meeting. Right. Um, you know, George is out. Same same thing. And, and um, but it does like to your point, it doesn't end tonight. So and uh, there's there's going to be more opportunity for the for the public to voice their opinion. And I think it's a tight ordinance. It's based on the feedback, it's gotten tighter. Um, and it, I, don't, I don't object to anything in, in the manner in which it's written um, or, or 
the backstory behind the way it's written. Mm -hmm. So the only issue would be to continue it or not, and I, I don't see a compelling argument to continue. Mm -hmm. Do you have no thoughts? I guess I feel similarly. I mean, yes, the room was very packed last time, and I was surprised to come in and not see it the same way this time. But I take your point that you know it was public aware knowledge that this was the time of the continuance. So um, I mean, but I also take Lily. Is it? I take Lily's point as well that I mean there is a sort of momentum that comes along, and if we've made a recommendation, it has a right. potential to take on a, a life of its own that it might not if we continued it and sort of held it a little further back in the process. But um, I also feel really good about what's here, uh, much better than I felt with the version that we saw last mm -hmm. time. I'm a little bit, Carolyn, I don't know if you can sort of speak toward this. Um, I went back and rewatched a little bit of the video just to refresh my memory because it was long enough yeah. ago. Um, and one of the things that the city still So you were here and you watched the video. <laughs> well, I so many time. things happened between then and now. It's yeah. like I just really couldn't. I needed to sort of bring it all back. So, um, one of the things I understood the city solicitor to say was that part of the issue with saying five acres or twenty-five thousand board feet or what have you is that that was sort of a random number. And why would that number be tied to the health and wellness of right. the city of Northampton as opposed to two acres or ten or five trees or whatever? And so I'm happy to see that this the threshold is lower and that there are a lot more specific data points on which we can analyze that. But I'm a little I'm just sort of curious about how these numbers now do feel comfortable that three acres that anything below the three acres wouldn't have a detrimental effect. I mean, how, like you said that he's comfortable with those numbers and you described how they, how you came up with them, but I still don't exactly see the link between um, the three acres or the five trees 100 years old and why that's the, how that's. Well, you know, well, I'll take the first one first. <laughs> um, um, so, I mean, I think there's still a level of uncertainty about how this ordinance pans out. I think the city solicitor is still unsure whether it's feasible to require the stumps remain in place in order to keep the carbon in the ground. Um, he's definitely not that comfortable with that. He understands the argument, but he didn't say that it was legally incorrect or um, untenable, I should say. Um, <clears throat> so I think I think he, I think at some level, a number um, to create a threshold is always going to be arbitrary. Um, and, it, you know, 25,000 board feet was initially created because that's the state threshold in which you need to get a forest cutting plan for any, for cutting. Um, and um, so <coughs> I guess. Um, I, you know, he didn't really comment too much on that three acre threshold. Yeah. I explained sort of how I got to that number. Um, and I think basically because it's, um, I think at that level, once you start taking down that number of those, that area of trees, um, which in fact is tied to, I mean, there must be a reason why the state determine that 25,000 board feet was a threshold for having to get a forest cutting plan. So there is some <clears throat> basis for that and then tying that to sort of the geographic area that we have seen already, um, I felt was a little bit more um, sure-footed than, um, you know, pulling out five acres. Right. So <clears throat> um, I think at that, I guess I would say that, you know, <clears throat> the science behind um, potential impacts to habitat is there once you start, you know, taking down that much forested area in an area that has, I mean, obviously most of New England was clear cut right. at one point, but it's all been reforested. Now we have different types of habitats and it affects, you know, all levels of that. So I think that, I guess I would say having it, tying it to an ecosystem analysis probably has a, I'm speaking for the city solicitor and I, I'm, or trying to interpret maybe why he was comfortable. Sure, sure. Is that, that you, I think 
you could make a stronger argument to the health, safety, and welfare of the community if you're destroying or if the analysis shows that you're right. having such a big impact on you know, the, all the um, multiple facets of the ecology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then to speak about the, we did debate about the cluster. Mm -hmm. Initially I said cluster, and you said that wasn't specific yeah. enough. You said, what's a cluster? <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled five out of the air. That is completely debatable. It's just, I put it out there for you all to think about. But the idea is that you can't leave one tree standing alone and expect it to survive. Mm -hmm. That you need something around it because there's that synergy with a stand of trees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, five may be too little. Um, so that number is definitely not based on any, you know, any solid research. Well, I mean, so now we're going to, it seems like the best thing for what, I, what I'd like to see is, you know, push, you know, approve this and, you know, give the people who want to debate this further at sort of the next steps that information so that they can then look at the, look at the number five or, you know, whatever that is and, and actually add to it or change it. I mean, maybe it's, Maybe the number's two, maybe the number's ten, but the point is is that I, I sort of feel like getting it going so that there's something constructive that, uh, that people can actually edit makes sense to me. And I will say, you know, City Council, all, I mean, the Legislative Committee, Legislative Matters Committee, can decide that they want more information right. and continue their hearing. That right. doesn't there's no clock ticking that requires the whole council to take action with it because the public hearing would still technically be open because the legislative matters could change deem it that way. When we were when the rezoning all the rezoning work was going on, didn't didn't they also have the option or don't they have the option to kick something back to us? Is that, is that a thing? Or am I misremembering? Um it is a thing. Yeah. I mean like if they decided that they wanted for us as a body to re-deliberate. They, they could, in theory, send it back to us, right? They could. It, then we would, we under would that scenario, we'd have to re-advertise it, right. but they could at the same time keep their hearing open. So they could keep theirs open. We could re-advertise mm -hmm. yeah. and have it back if they, I mean, and many times they feel uncomfortable if they make substantive changes. Right. Um, uh, without having feedback from the planning oh, board the board, yeah. but I have no idea you know where this would go and yeah. I mean I guess so the bottom line is I think you all should just determine whether you think this is um, you're comfortable enough with this to make a recommendation on it and if you're not right. then you're not and you know we can continue to deliberate well, what yeah. would happen is they meet once a month so if you all felt you wanted some more information before you could make a recommendation or whatever you <clears throat> determine, then I would just send a message back to the Legislative Matters Committee not to put it on their April 8th agenda, and then they would punt it to their May agenda. Or if you didn't feel like taking it up in April, you know, they, they would then have to push it to their June agenda. So right. that's the okay. process. Well, I think based on what you guys said, I think a uh, uh, discussion, you continue, right? Um, and change that have already made since that meeting. Mm -hmm. I would just go forward with this. <clears throat> um, questions? Yeah. A um, couple of things. First, something of interest. After the last meeting, I did a, just a bit of research <clears throat> on the trade off between um, trees and solar panels. And according to this article, which was pretty mathematical, and the person seemed to know what they were talking about, but I have no idea, really, says that solar is substantially more valuable in removing carbon. Um, not even close. Um, anyone can look at this if they want. Um, as far as this ordinance, I, I read it over a couple of times, and I think it is so dense and complicated 
and above my ability to understand the issues that I I feel I would have to abstain on any vote having to do with it. It's, um, I mean, it's it's just way over our heads. I, I, um, I if going over some of the, just quickly, some of the language, um, uh, an analysis of the structure and diversity of the canopy, mid-story and understory, um, the, it deals with certifiable vernal pools. I'm, I think I know what a vernal pool is. I'm not, don't quiz me on it. Um, clusters, the issue that you discussed, Carolyn, clusters of five or more trees, 100 years or older. I don't even know what that sentence means. Does that mean five trees constitute a cluster or takes a number of, cluster, a number of five tree groups to constitute multiple clusters. I don't even know what it means. Um, uh, the next portion gets even more dense. Um, information regarding the abundance and distribution of habitats, um, historical information on the extent and quality of the habitats, uh, analysis about fragmented, or that the habitat is not fragmented and that connectivity remains. I have no idea what that means. Um, gets into carbon neutral. I mean, I think I have a vague idea of what carbon neutral means, but somebody else might explain to me that I'm totally wrong. I, I just basically think it's, uh, uh, then it goes on to talk about carbon offsets and short tons of carbon. I mean, short tons, tall tons, I, I, don't, I don't get, I mean, I, don't, I think this whole thing is so dense and over our head that I, doubt that any one of us understands it, except Carolyn, maybe. Um, I think some of us maybe and, do, but <laughs> uh, and and, um, uh, and we're going to have to decide. I mean, a lot of this stuff, I would guess, um, you could have two professional scientists in the fields to present two totally different kinds of analyses. And how are we going to decide which is correct? I, 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 Whichever I one is better to lend it to us. <laughs> the, one that, the, the one that... I mean, I, I don't think that just because something is... I mean, that's why you have an expert who comes to explain it. And if they well, can't explain it, then we can't vote. Um, and if you have two experts, we're supposed to be able to decide which one is more correct. And I think that's over our pay grade. We do that on a lot of issues. <clears throat> um, you have to evaluate what the information is giving you from two different perspectives. But this is much more scientific and and uh, that's why you put in here that it takes a, um, a individual with a master's degree in wildlife biology or ecological science because you know they probably should have a PhD. I, um, I, so that, that language does come out of an existing state statute for um, uh, wetlands evaluation, um, and, uh, and this analysis is is pretty standard in the field. Well, um, that goes to CONSCOM, though. But, um, well, no, I'm just saying that, that this that this is not, I mean, this is an acceptable sort of way to evaluate credentials for someone who you, you are seeking um, scientific information from. So um, I didn't make up the credentials, I guess is what I'm saying, is, and it's sort of a standard that, that is used oh. in the Commonwealth. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then there's, um, from the research that I did, you know, this, this kind of analysis is pretty standard going back, you know, looking from, you know, decades ago through different um, literature and um, EPA um, standards for evaluating um, ecosystems and um, well, we're so, talking about the zoning right but so this information you want someone to tell you what's the framework of this area that's being cut and how what kind of impacts will it so you're going to rely on someone who understands those um, those systems to say well you know Here's here are the type here's the habitat that's there. If you cut this p 
piece out, you're really going to have this whole other area that's going to survive and thrive, and overall the percentage of impact is going to be so minimal. So, you know, as a scientist, I don't think that this is going to have a negative impact. So that's the kind of thing you want to hear. Um, or the person might say, you know what, this is the most pristine forest in this part of Massachusetts, that it, it contains X, Y, and Z, it's going to have an impact on all these other habitats. Um, and so maybe you want to, maybe the person wants to look at cutting in this other location instead of in this piece of it. So. Right. I'm sorry, one other question I have. The, the, in the last subparagraph E, and that release of carbon, applicants shall assign RECs, uh, renewable energy credits, to match or exceed. Are those, can you balance those off? Uh, I mean, well, that's the thing is, equal? it's a commodity. <laughs> so how it's do, for how sale you, across the country. So how you, that's how people, some people can say, you know, they're offsetting their carbon in one place because they're buying renewable energy somewhere else. And it's just, I don't understand. Uh, is it can you calculate whether the the wrecks will match or exceed the release of carbon? They're they're comparable calculations. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I would prefer down. There's a lot of this in here that's like way over my head, but I also feel the same. As some of the other board members that it's like we have to get started somewhere and I think we're a lot further away a lot further we're further away from where we started and I think that's a good thing and as long as uh, in legislative matters the public once again can come and talk and maybe mold it in a certain way if we have completely missed something but we really listened I feel like the last time mm -hmm. the public was here and there were a lot of them and they took their time explaining their situations and what their thoughts were. I think we, you know, took our time listening and I think it's reflective in here, though Lily's correct that maybe they didn't get the time to check it out for more than a eight, ten hour period or whatever it was, but they knew it was going to happen again today and not pe people aren't here except for the two of them or three of them maybe, but I think we, my feeling is that we, I would back this to move forward to the next level and then see where it goes from there. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'm, I'm very sensitive to people having adequate time to review something, but this is a, a page. I mean, we're not talking about some of our new site plans that come in that are 15 pages and full of amendments. You know, I mean, this... Um, but it's more dense and complicated than... <coughs> um, I think... That may be true right. for some people. I don't think that that's universally true, and I think it probably isn't true for the people who care deeply about it, who were recommending some of this language. You know, I think that th there are a lot of things in here that that may not be familiar to some people, but for people who care about this issue, there are a lot of things that you know, language that they see in many, many other places that they're very familiar with. Um, I mean, you know, I think it's good that, that we are responsive to you know, to the public in these things. I, I'm, I will say I'm, I was surprised, I'm surprised that the city solicitor is okay with this language because it does seem quite burdensome in some ways, you know, I mean, it's, um, but if he, you know, it would be interesting to see this level of detail required for single family housing zoning. <laughs> Tell me what, the, I mean, really, like, you know, we're not asking for this level of, of proof, so to speak, for other sorts of development, and um, I'm not saying that we should. I'm not saying we shouldn't, but it's it's interesting to me that you know he is if he is on board with it, then I say yes, let's continue to, to do it and use it, um, and send it you know send it to council and allow for another public hearing on it. Um, but it is it is very very detailed, and it, and it, it we are also in a situation where it's possible after our three ground mounted array projects. We may not see another one, right? I mean, could, but you know, it's you know, this certainly isn't um, going to result in a new project. So, <laughs> it's you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, maybe maybe there are some in the hopper, but yeah. you know, we just don't know until until credits are released. But um, but I would feel comfortable moving it 
moving it forward at this point. And Alan, I think to your point regarding make, our board making a finding, you know, we do, when we're doing site plan reviews and especially special permit reviews, you know, we're reading those stormwater analyses or the traffic impact analyses, or some of us are reading them, and, you know, and sometimes they may be very technical, but it's, it is an applicant's responsibility to, to give us the detailed information that we may need to make that finding. So I, I don't think this is particularly different. It's a different subject matter, but it isn't a particularly different level of detail than what we're seeing in some of the other documents that we get as part of our packages regularly. Um, and if, you know, certainly if any of us doesn't feel comfortable with that information, that's, you know, then we use abstentions and, or we ask for continuations. So I, I don't think this is forcing us to make any decisions we're not comfortable with. Well, as long as I can ask people to explain it to me. Yeah. That is that. <laughs> That's your problem. No, I have a thought. It's interesting, it occurs to me that, um, I mean, it's just kind of an aside, but that there's a strong uh, act of vocal advocacy group for trees, which is great. That's fine. They should be doing that. But there's no corresponding adv advocacy group for soul. At least that shows up here. Um, the, so it seems. I'm an advocate of solar. <laughs> <laughs> Me <Good>. too. <laughs> well, <laughs> as I recall the last meeting, most of the people who are advocating one point of view. Um, you know, I'm not sa saying, uh, again, that's great that people are advocating for trees. They should do that. But it makes kind of an unbalanced presentation. I think, you know, in the past we've made zoning ordinance uh, amendments or recommendations for those based on, among other things, like you said, traffic impact studies mm -hmm. or stormwater <coughs> analysis or light, you know, safety mm -hmm. levels, all of which technically none of us are um, experts, experts, experts in, right. so we rely on the information given to us based on, right. you know, the, uh, the experts behind it or the DPW or, or legal and so forth. So. Um, and I think as a group we can we need to rely on that information but the intent of this ordinance to me is clear mm -hmm. um, down into the weeds there might be some references to Alan's point that I don't technically um, right. I'm not versed in but uh, the intent is clear and it's been vetted by legal it's been uh, it's been uh, addressed by the we've had public comment and we and it's been um, changed because of that public comment and, and and because this this process isn't done, I'm, I'm in favor of just uh, moving this forward. Would anyone like to make a motion? Yeah, the motion to end the discussion. To, to, to close comment. the hearing and then make a recommendation. To close the hearing and then a second okay. motion to make a motion to close the hearing and uh, second. A second for Mark. And is there a motion to make a recommendation to the city council's legislative matters? I'm asking you if you would like to, <laughs> if there is a motion okay. that someone would like to make. Okay. Uh, is this one going on, right? Oh, yes. Uh, so you, it would be a recommendation to the City Council Legislative Matters Committee. It's not, it's not written. Oh. Sorry. So moved. Yeah. So moved. Yeah. <laughs> is there a second? Anna? Uh, those in favor? Or, Oops. Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. And the, the City Council Legislative Affairs, Legislative Matters Committee will meet on April 8th at 5 p.m. in Council Chambers? Yes, in Council Chambers. We have a 7.45 p.m. hearing for a request for a special permit <coughs> from Pirate Valley Habitat to Humanity Florence, map ID 42-179, 8081, and 82 to reduce tree replacement based on provision of affordable housing. Is there a presentation from the applicant? That's me. Uh, so I didn't bring any presentation materials, but I am assuming you have our application that I can reference. Yes. Um, so, Pine Valley Habitat for Humanity is building four homes as part of a special permit that the city um, got uh, 
for this land before they transfer the property to Habitat. Um, and there are three lots on a common driveway and then a fourth lot on the road. So for the application today, I presented materials about the trees that we cut down for the three houses on the common driveway, which is lots two, three, and four. So uh, we have, from the very beginning, and with the city support, planned these homes as uh, zero net energy homes to be energy efficient. And as Pioneer Valley Habitat does, um, they are, our mission is to build low income housing. These houses are subject to a future deed restriction, so they'll be permanently affordable to people earning less than 80% of the area median income. So um, when we went out to inventory the trees on this lot, um, there was over 50 <coughs> acres of land conserved as part of this project. Four acres were set aside for development, and the city conserved um, over 50 acres of land. We were surprised to find there were a number of significant trees. Um, so with the recent changes to the city's significant tree bylaw, we wanted to come back and asked for an amendment to the permit so that we could be um, under the jurisdiction of that new version of the significant tree bylaw um, and get a waiver of the replacement requirement for the trees that we cut down that were to the south and east of the zero energy building. Can you just say again how many trees were significant trees that we need to replace? So there were. Um, um, for lots two, three, and four, 15 trees. Um, uh, it was 413 um, dress height inches. Um, so basically, we met, get, had each tree measured at breast height, and for each inch at breast height, we're supposed to replace with uh, at least a half inch caliper of trees. So divide the 413 in half to find the amount that we would have to replace. Um, so if we eliminate from that calculation the number of trees that um, were cut down that are to the south and east of the homes, which provide solar access to the homes, um, it brings that number of 413 down to 185 inches. And so, and your request is to not have to do any of that replacement. Is that correct? Uh, I would certainly that? make that so argument that we shouldn't, <laughs> that the whole project. Um, so all 413 acres, inches of trees, all 15 trees were cut down for access to the um, homes. Mm -hmm. Some, because there's a long common driveway, some of them are not in front of the houses. They are part of the project whose goals was zero net energy houses. Um, so I would be um, very happy if you considered the whole project as a whole if that we cut down those trees. Um, but at the very least, I was looking for a waiver of the trees that are to the south and east of the homes directly in the solar path of the, uh, that would have blocked the solar access to the homes. And um, just a question from one of our board members who wasn't able to be here who submitted a comment in advance. Um, is there, so the intention is for there to be solar, but there is no guarantee that solar will be. We will be installing solar before we sell it to the homeowners. Okay, so it will be. There is a guarantee that it, they will be sold actually solar ready. Yeah, um, at, and I submitted the solar array layout that PV squared um, put together okay. for the houses. Great. Um, for lot one, I didn't include that in these calculations because we haven't actually made that decision yet. Okay. For those that one lot. But these lot two, three, and four are already under construction. The lots are cleared. The solar panels um, are on order. So, technical questions from the board before we hear from the public. Um, we'll open it up to public comment, and then uh, I'm happy to we'll keep answering questions if I can. Terrific. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any comments from the public on this particular agenda item? Please come up to the podium and state your name and your address for us. Thoughts from folks on the board about the request? I'm happy to make a public comment. Just so you know, what a balanced person I am. 
Um, again, Lily Lombard, 39 Monroe Street. I want to make clear that I, I support this project. I think it's, um, you know, this is in line with the language of the Significant Tree Ordinance to request and to be granted uh, waivers for projects like these that um, promote affordable housing in the city and that also advance our solar production. Um, so I, um, I fully support it. And I will also say that I asked the tree warden to keep a, a spreadsheet of all of the inches of, um, of trees that we lose and don't have a plan for replacing. And I think that that's important data to keep track of um, for any, any project where significant trees are lost and um, you know, in canopy is, you know, is reduced in the city. Did you say that you want us to ask him to do that, or you've already I, asked I, him? I'm, I've already asked him oh. to do that. I just want to let you know that we're that we're trying to, we're trying to, to track the data yeah. because I think it's important. I think it's also important to realize, and this kind of goes to the significant tree ordinance in a conversation we've had with Carolyn, is that we are increasingly recognizing the um, the crudeness of the um, of the significant tree ordinance when it evaluates inches of at diameter of breast height. Um, because as we know, with each inch that you gain in a tree, you get a, a multiplicative amount of tree mass. And so the difference between a one inch and a two inch tree is much difference between the, the, different, the difference between a 21 and a 22 inch tree. So just to say that I feel like this raises some important questions about how we evaluate trees and what we consider important um, uh, replacement mm -hmm. for trees. And so that is to that is something that we are taking under consideration. We hope to work with the planning department to refine and improve the language about replacement. But as to this project, um, we're in full support. Thank you. And just so you know, the zoning does require that we track the number of trees taken out as part of the planning board's process of review of site plan. So going back to when this was first adopted, mm -hmm. we've been tracking that information and okay. sharing it with the tree board. Mm -hmm. So we have a spreadsheet. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, and for other board members, staff does recommend approval uh, to reduce the total tree replacement population. So, uh, so not completely, but just be adjusted for the south end. Right. Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's what's allowed adjusted by zoning. Yeah. 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 So I feel comfortable with that. It is a very good project. So, um, other questions, comments, discussion, questions for the applicant? Do you think that there are <coughs> other, um, many other projects or any other projects that would fall into this that are sort of somewhere in process and might come and ask to fall into the new zoning? The old zone? Yes. yes. There are at least two. The spreadsheet will go. Uh, is there a motion to close our comment on this issue? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's great that we're doing um, affordable housing. But you know, if, like, yes. how would this, this board go if, like, I, you know, someone's building five mansions? Then, then it's just, what would we say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not eligible for the The ordinance is very specific about the board having to weigh the um, benefits. One of them is for um, solar access to individual homes, um, but there are, but that's not the only one. You, it, the way the ordinance states is you have to have more than one benefit. So this one was solar and affordable housing. It could be open space preservation and solar access. Um, so a mansion so, builder could get away. What's that? A mansion builder could get away. Right. Right. A mansion builder could get away. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you building a mansion? <laughs> so two criteria is the rule. Two and minimally, I think the way it's going is written, and it could be more. Sure but. Yeah, I mean, I we, we're committed. We don't have to. I, I was just. It was more That's of a, a question. question of yeah, it's a good consistency. Question. Right, and it's not just for affordable housing. Yeah. 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 Right. Now is there a motion? I make a motion to close public hearing. Is there a second? Yeah. All yeah. in favor? Yeah. Anyone opposed? Is there another motion? No. No. Uh, motion to approve the special permit 
Amendment for Pioneer Valley Habitat from Community Florence Map ID 42-179, 180, 181, and 182 to reduce tree replacement based on provisions of the four laws. Is there a second? Kristen. All those in favor? No. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And we have an 8 p.m. hearing, a request by Patrick J. Melnick, Jr. and Zoe Zeichner for a special permit to major site plan to construct a three-story residential building with more than 20% reduction in parking at 76 Gothic Street, Northampton Map ID, 31B-188. Um, for folks who are in the room, we typically begin our hearings with a presentation from the applicant. And we may ask some technical questions, and at that point, we'll open up um, the floor for public comment. Uh, is there a presentation from the applicant? First, um, yes. I, I know a number of people, members of the Melnick family. I know Zoe Seichner, uh, Pat's wife. Um, I think I can be objective but if anyone uh, wants to have me recuse myself, I can do that. Are there any um, issues? Uh, anyone, would anyone like for Mr. Wersen to recuse himself? His name is what? Mr. Verson. Alan Verson. Verson. What, what's that? You're famous. And I'm the applicant along with my wife, Zoe Zeichner, who is not here tonight. Uh, but we are, um, we do own 76 Gothic Street where the uh, uh, project is proposed uh, here in Northampton. Uh, the site is uh, currently on the uh, corner of Trumbull Road and, and Gothic Street, uh, as you can Could see. Could you by the, speak a little louder? Oh, sure. Uh, the, the project is on Gothic Street in Northampton. Uh, it's on the corner of Gothic Street and Trumbull Road. And um, uh, we're proposing to put a, uh, a, a second building on the same lot. Uh, the second building is proposed to have a uh, three condominiums uh, within it. Uh, the existing use of the, uh, 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 the site is a, uh, a, a single building. The uh, first floor is uh, primary, is, well, it's, it's uh, office space. Uh, my wife actually works there and uh, uh, she's a lawyer. She works there uh, with another, a few other lawyers primarily. And on the second floor is a uh, apartment rental that we rent out. Uh, on, the, um, on the side where the proposed building is currently is, uh, is a, just a lawn uh, with a small shed which is proposed to be removed. Um, and that's where the proposed development is. Um, we uh, Currently there's a uh, access off uh, Trumbull Road uh, for uh, parking. There's about four to five uh, parking spaces there now in the back and the rear. In the rear of the building. Um, they're not marked, but about four or five cars can fit there now. We're proposing to expand that slightly to uh, seven spaces. Uh, there's a, an additional diagram I can put to in a minute that shows the uh, uh, parking plan. Uh, but we are asking for a reduction uh, in the parking uh, by over 20%. Uh, we feel that's appropriate for a, a, n a number of reasons. There. Primarily, this, uh, this uh, proposed development is close to downtown. Uh, we feel that uh, people will be able to walk to uh, pretty much anything they need. They have access to buses, they have access to the bikes, the electronic bikes downtown. They, have a, they can walk to the bus station downtown. They can walk to the train. So we don't feel that um, uh, this project is going to increase traffic uh, uh, by any substantial means. Um, and for that reason, we don't feel that there's a need for much parking at the property. Uh, we think the reduction in uh, parking is appropriate. 
uh, due to the limited need to uh, drive anywhere uh, based on this property, this project's location. Uh, there was uh, one tree that was uh, cut this past summer at the, on the existing lawn uh, that was over 20 inches. We are proposing to add a number of trees um, around the lot where we are able. I think we're proposing to add six trees. Um, uh, that will be that will not be enough to replace the uh, like the existing the the, uh, the amount of inches of the half, the half inches of the tree that was uh, re uh, removed. So uh, I have proposed to uh, pay into the uh, tree fund to make up for the difference there. Um, uh, there will be uh, uh, well, the condo. Well, I can show you a picture of the condos. Before I go any further, I should say that Terry Reynolds is the engineer in this project and Emily Estes is the architect who's uh, designing this, uh, uh, these plans and they're both here tonight and probably can answer any questions you have. But this is a preliminary plan uh, by Emily Estes. As you can see, the, uh, the proposal is uh, a stack design so each uh, condo will uh, be on one single floor. Um, uh, uh, there will be a basement, which storage in the basement uh, we're proposing that uh, bike storage uh, be in the basement as well so that uh, people who live there can have bikes. Uh, uh, we're not proposing any dumpsters uh, on the site. We're proposing that everybody maintain their own trash, uh, which can be done uh, and maintained below the stairway, as you can see in the rear. Uh, Where? Uh, the, the stairs will be in the rear of the building. Uh, So this would be the rear of the building and we would propose putting the trash right there. The existing building here uh, has a stairway to the existing apartment and they maintain their trash under that stairway and recycle. Um, and do so just picks it up? Do so just picks it up, correct. We're proposing the same essentially for the new building. Um, we are asking that the traffic study be uh, waived uh, for the very similar reasons for the parking study be waived uh, due to the close proximity to downtown, the availability of resources uh, to these residents by walking and biking and, and public transportation. Um, uh, we don't think the uh, uh, traffic will be increased uh, in any significant way. Um, as you can see the uh, uh, in the front of the building, uh, there will be a uh, walking access to the uh, existing uh, sidewalk the uh, rear of the building will be where the uh, uh, where you can come in and park and, and get to your and, and get access to uh, your condo in that that direction. So that that's essentially our plan. If, uh, if you have any other questions, can you say a little bit about lighting? About lighting on on the building near the building. The lighting, uh, I can with uh, uh, Emily actually suggested that specifically, but we're not, we're, the only lighting I believe we're uh, proposing is there is a, a small outdoor porch for each unit, this right here, and we'll, we'll have lighting in the front steps and we'll have lighting for each of the units uh, when they act, where they access the building. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lighting design uh, or lighting plan attached to, I believe, your plans, which shows uh, the lighting, but it's, I think it's fairly modest. Uh, for the building, you know, uh, no large lights being uh, uh, directed any, in any direction. Pat, could, could you on the passenger car movement plan? Can you explain the the way those that car is moving? I mean, uh, it, it's I can I think Terry could probably explain that better, but I, it's my understanding it's a tight spot, as you can see, because of the. Uh, 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 the five uh, parking spots behind the existing building. They, the, the cars who park in those two additional spots behind the new building will have to make a, um, they won't be able to make one sweeping movement and then uh, leaving the uh, uh, parking lot. They're gonna have to make a couple. 15, 20, 20. I don't know about 15, but a couple, couple back and forth. So they pass out and with the 
rear of the car facing the lawn and then pull, pull forward. Out. I think they back out towards the lawn. I believe they pull forward, back and out. And DPW had comments about that and sort of fortifying the um, edge of the pavement there to prevent, um, you know, um, degradation of the lawn area. How would that work in the winter or snow removal in general? How is that going to work? There's a couple of spots for snow removal uh, towards the entrance of the uh, where Trumbull Road as well as the uh, the lawn between the two uh, houses. But the reality is that the snow is going to have to be removed if there's a big storm. Yeah, we saw it. it's a snow storage, and I thought yeah. Yeah. snow removal would be yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what it'll have to. You're going to get through a couple of storms, I think. Yeah. Not the whole winter. Uh, other technical questions before we open it up? So, yeah, uh, just back to the parking. Uh, so, four parking spaces, that's what it is. Four parking spaces, that's what you have? Seven. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, no, there's, there's, exi sorry, there's existing. There's about four or five right now. Uh, we're, we're proposing seven actual spaces. Two at the end. Right. How can you get seven okay. out of five? What, what would the normal requirement be that they're coming in under for that? Um, so yeah, so the 13. table shows 13. So they're asking for a special permit. This project is not only a major site plan, but also a special permit for the reduction yeah. in total required parking. Mm -hmm. um, so they're asking for uh, just under 50% okay. reduction. Why would it be 13? So you have the office space and the existing apartment, and then three, the size of each of the units would trigger two parking spaces per, per yeah. Got it. So six, just six parking spots in theory for the brand new building. Just the new building. Right. Just the new building. Plus the office, Plus your office right. space and the existing and apartment. And the other apartment. Uh, I, I don't mean to be crude, but I mean, these, I'm guessing, are going to be very nice units do you imagine that anyone in one of these apartments is ever going to use the bus i don't know why not that's a, have you ever used the bus here uh, yes yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, has the applicant seen the comments from the staff um they're yeah. not in this format but we corresponded about um outstanding issues um, I think the only remaining issue probably is about the crumble sidewalk right, and so to that to be replaced. So, yeah, so relative to the <coughs> reduction in parking, uh, one of the comments was there's on street parking, but concerning that, you want uh, easy access from where they're parking to the building and the sidewalks on both sides, Gothic and Trumbull, are in rough shape. So, um, you heard the comment from the uh, staff to replace not just at the entrance of the uh, or at the corner but the entirety of the property on Gothic and Trumbull for the sidewalks and you're okay with that? Well, I don't know if I'm okay with that. I think it's fair. It's, I think it's a little excessive. I, I mean, we're, we're for the traffic mitigation, we're, we're, uh, we're paying in the $3,000 as required by the rules. I, I tell you, the replacing both sidewalks, the Trumbull Street sidewalk, as well as the, the Gothic Street sidewalk, and I'm going to have to install potentially granite on the Gothic Street sidewalk, in, as well as put in the uh, corner of the, uh, the corner. Uh, I got a price for this, it's over $22,000, so it's, it's a fairly expensive undertaking. Um, in fact, I think it's excessive. I think that, uh, that's an excessive requirement uh, for what we're asking and for the size of this project. Do you want to, I think one of the sidewalks on the edge of the property. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, I was like, what as you know, in all in your site plan review projects, any applicant that is about the street needs to either install a new sidewalk if one doesn't exist, or make sure the sidewalks are meet standards um, surrounding the property. In this case, there are sidewalks there, but they're 
um, falling apart, and they certainly don't so meet ADA compliance point. with all the upheavals on yeah. yeah. both sides and the cracked yeah. panels. Given that there um, will be heavily reliant on the street for on-street parking, um, that means that people will be definitely using the sidewalks and needing to have access um, using the sidewalks. So. Are both uh -huh. sidewalks in equally bad shape? Yes. Yeah, if you look at the pictures, I mean, they are rough. But so in theory, if they didn't need a parking reduction, if they had 13, 15 spaces. Well, no, the zoning still says you need to bring the infrastructure that abuts your property up to standard if it's not. And even if there were no sidewalks, the, um, the requirement is to put place sidewalks. Well, we've done that a number of times, yeah. you know, at, <clears throat> we talk about like River Valley Market and Sulphur, where there's a sidewalk to nowhere, right. um, but that's the only opportunity we have right. at that time is to install a sidewalk, hoping that eventually right. the sidewalk on either side will catch up, and you could argue the same thing here that over time. And it's not that it's also not part of traffic mitigation because it's about the site itself. So traffic mitigation is for off-site mm -hmm. impacts. Okay. <clears throat> So, so how many parts? So there are four units, right? Two, three right. residential, mm -hmm. and seven park spots. Mm -hmm. So plus an office. Yeah, three plus one. So um, it's actually four plus one. Right. There are four right. residential so units plus office. This five. building is office plus one residential. Oh, so three, four residential mm -hmm. plus office. So seven parking space for usually two. You know, I have this problem with the. Uh, uh, party in downtown. I live in the old school, and we have 80 plus units, commercial mixed use, and we have a hundred ten park space. So nowadays, um, folks, elders, who live in a building, a residential park, they cannot leave and do grocery because the commercial kick it in and park in their spot. Um, so I'm very kind of a uneasy when the number of parking, unless that is stipulated somehow that the residents, they will have parking available uh, and not be taken by commercial or, I don't know. I just have this problem. I mean, I, yeah, I don't, that's, that's it's outside our purview, them, right? but, you know, I mean, it looks like from this application that you're looking to propose these as condominiums, so your condominium documents would need to you know, yeah. be precise and specific. Is that correct, that they would be condominiums as opposed to rental units? So, yes, the, the three nil are going to be What I would say, though, part of the um, argument in the zoning for having a reduction in parking for shared uses is that there's di different demands at different times. So um, it certainly wouldn't be staff recommendation that parking spaces be assigned um, for certain times of the day, particularly in this situation, and there's quite a bit of on-street parking. Um, around the property and no so um, th I think that um, assigning spaces sort of is goes against the concept in the zoning that there would be different peak demands so the office users would be there during the day probably the residential tent, uh, occupants would be there in the evenings more so than during the day well theoretically I think right. that's good but on practice that does not happen my experience back in there uh, and that is uh, personally that is not uh, enough number of parking space for, for residents to leave them to the grocery in the middle of the day or in the morning or come to the doctor they have no way to park close to the building and uh, to have to their unit so it's, this whole thing is kind of a well, let's um, open it up for public comment, and then yeah. we'll take. We'll ha I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a discussion mm -hmm. about parking, and once we hear from folks, we can sort of talk about what. I mean, I, I kind of think park time. I, I mean, well, I, I just park. wonder if that's enough, and that's why I ask how many per unit parking space can be allocated. Okay. We'll talk more about parking, I'm sure. So uh, we'll open it up to public comment for now. We will leave the public hearing open. We may ask you come back and answer some questions as well. Oh, that's, that's fine. I, I didn't know if you wanted to hear from Emily FC's especially on the lighting question. I didn't know if I answered that. Yeah, uh, yeah. actually, yeah, you would like, that would be great. <laughs> All right. uh, hello, I'm Emily. Hi. Things are, you know, in the early stages, so let's see here. I believe part of the submittal had cut sheets. Mm -hmm. 
and he pulled one away. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's a separate trying. file. Oh, that would be. Pretty small, but the um, light fixtures are indicated on the elevations. There's one at every. This is the rear elevation, and it's not going there. Okay. There's one um, by the rear entry door right here, and there would be a porch light. Those are cut sheets that are indicated. Um, here we go. No, These are the um, porch is roof that lights. Going, um, is that what it's going to be towards his house. This is the exterior wall scots. These all meet dark light requirements. This is the um, front entry, rear entry, porch light. And then if I can find my plan, I'll show you where they are. On this plan, you'll see a W1 right here, W2 right here. These are the exterior sconces. And then we have a front entry at the front entry portico, the C1, and then the C1 at each um, exterior balcony. So it's very minimally lit. Any other questions? Are those um, motion activated, did you say? Or they're on a timer? Um, I haven't gotten that far. Okay. Can you describe, do you want to just show the elevations of the sure. building and also describe the exterior finish, sort of what the elements are? So, um, we went with a federal style type building that is uh, historically precedent in New England. Um, and with this, we, some key elements are symmetry, balance in the front facade. We have a very symmetrical balance. It has a traditional portico that's all going to be um, finished in burrell or wood like features. Um, and then at the other key feature being a decorative cornice at the top. Um, we are proposing to use vinyl siding and with a high quality vinyl window. Um, at the bottom here is a close-up detail of a paradigm lit window. So we're going with very high end. Uh, I will have a crown and some decorative molding, uh, casing moldings. Um, and then also a fixed raised panel shutter. Um, again, going very traditional, I think it'll be a very classic uh, design. The, the picture in the lower left, it, is that of the proposed building it's or a just to show? Precedent image. Um, so it's of an existing building and that's what we're striving for as far as the decorative cornice and some of the window detail. The detail at the roof line, I assume, is more elaborate than what you would do. Um, I am, you know, budget is always an issue from my perspective. I would love to have a very decorative cornice, um, but within reason. But I would say it'd be similar to that picture, with the exception of the corbel brackets would probably not be there. But it would be multiple layers of trim built up. But that's in your detail. Anyway, right. above that, right? Yes, in yeah. the elevation. I don't have an actual right. detail. But. Thank you. <laughs> we'll open it up to public comment now. So if you've got a comment, please come to the podium and tell us <coughs> your address. Good evening. Hi. I'm Bill Beal. My wife, Jean Burks, and I live at 75 Gothic Street, directly across from the proposed building. Um, we've lived there for 25 years and hope to live there for 25 more, we hope. Um, we love where we live. It's a beautiful place. We love Northampton. We love the fact we can walk everywhere. However, we don't work where we can walk, and so we have two cars. So I think the argument that people can live there and walk and not have as many cars really isn't a good argument. I will say that the parking behind the current building is rarely used, so two or three cars at a time. So it isn't overused now, and so the parking may, in fact, you know, be, be sufficient. Um, but I think the argument that people will walk and not use a car is not probably not the right one. I have a couple of concerns, though. Concerns about the sidewalks, and I'm glad to hear that you're aware of the fact that the sidewalks on both those streets are in poor condition, not just in this area. Um, the second area is the curbing. We've had this winter the curbing on the Trumbull's uh, roadside torn up a number of times by plows. Mm -hmm. So something that needs to happen around that, besides the safety of that. Um, we, of course, 
care about the landscaping and so on, like typical homeowners. And we care about the fact that this style of, of building is substantially different from the other housing in that area, or stock in that area. And we, of course, would prefer to look like we do, which is a 1840 farmhouse. Uh, this is unreasonable, but that is what that is. The other concern we have is the basement. We are at one of the lowest locations in Northampton. The Mill River used to run over there, and things that happen in the neighborhood tend to flood the basements around it. So I, I don't know if you've looked into that or not, but that is a, a caution I would, I would hope you would look into. And the last thing, is, I'm sorry, this is the last thing, which is snow removal. It's an important consideration, of course. And on the, on the Gothic side of this building is where the parking is in the street. And, and the snow removal is always difficult there. If the snow has nowhere to go, you either block the parking or the sidewalks. So some kind of remove snow removal beyond just the typical plowing that it needs to be in place for that to be really usable. So those are the comments I have. I totally support having a building there. It's an empty lot. I'd love to have a building there with, with owners. Um, it would be great for everybody. But I have those concerns about the proposal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Other comments? No, please go ahead. Uh, my name is Susan Grant. My husband and I live at number 24 Trumbull Road, and in August we will have been there 40 years, I guess. Um, we have tenants uh, on the ground floor and the third floor. Um, I strongly object to this proposal in its entirety. The neighborhood that we live in, close though it is to downtown, has always been surprisingly quiet. And part of the reason is that there have been some pockets of open space uh, in between the uh, buildings that presently stand there. Um, one of these was um, pretty uh, devastated by the St. Michael's project of building a gigantic ditch uh, in their backyard, which uh, they eventually partly filled in with cobblestones, but it still looks pretty odd. And the other is this proposal. I think this building is very far from um, any image I have of a Federalist uh, dwelling. Uh, the front, perhaps, uh, might occur as a little illustration in a book of how federal buildings have uh, nice windows. But what we will see from our house is the side, which looks rather like a minimum security prison. Um, the main objection I have to the entire project is that it is sacrificing by filling in one of the few remaining bits of open space that existed in that entire neighborhood. I don't consider it an empty lot. It was a green lawn where we frequently saw rabbits and occasionally a uh, fox uh, and frequently birds. Um, the more, I know that mantra at present is infill. The more you fill things in, the less space there is to turn around and, and the quality of life for the, those of us who want to continue living there um, becomes progressively more and more degraded to the point of being claustrophobic. Um, I am totally opposed to this project. I do want to just add one little practical point. I do agree with the man who just spoke that, although he was too polite to put it in this way, I think it's ludicrous to assert that if each of these units is bought and occupied, that the people who live in them will walk, bicycle, or bus everywhere they need to go. They won't. I walk and bicycle everywhere I possibly can, and I have taken the bus on occasion. It's not convenient. It's not comfortable. It doesn't turn up at the moment you want it, and if you were unlucky enough to be crippled, you would have a very tough time getting on and off of the bus every time you wanted to. I don't see any way that these people who are proposing this can ensure that the people who buy these units are all going to be extremely mobile, extremely well-to-do, and extremely motivated to walk and bicycle and use the bus. I would think that like most people in our neck of the woods, they want to have cars. And they're not going to have any place to put those cars. The uh, congestion on Trumbull Road and Gothic Street is already tremendous, especially in days the court is in session. So I see this as nothing but bad for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything? No, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. All right. Any other comments? Yes. Yes. My name is Dorothy Nian, and I live at 32 Trumbull Road. I've lived there for 72 years, and I like it the way it is. As it is, we have a lot of traffic. We have cars parking on Trumbull Road from the courthouse, from family services, from 
People's Institute, and it's pretty congested. The only time it isn't is after probably 8 o'clock at night. And Sue is right when she says, if people think, if you think people are going to ride bicycles, they're not. We have a few riders that ride around, but most of the people that live that close to town want to be able to either walk or drive. And it, if you have groceries, you can't carry them. You've got to have an automobile to carry them with. And as far as shopping, you like to shop where the prices are better. And that's the way it is. As far as parking, it's going to be horrible. And I can tell you that right now. I lived there long enough to know what it is. The building does not look like it fits in with Trumbull Road or with Gothic Street. It's like the building in Florence, probably, right, in, right on the main drag, practically in the middle of the road. It's going to be the same thing. I object to it. I object to the parking, the building, and it ruins our neighborhood. Thank you. with my wife at uh, 24 Trumbull Road for 40 years. We lived in Northampton for 51 years. And uh, <clears throat> I'd like to address the uh, parking in, with the new building. Uh, the old building has, at the most, five, maybe four and a half spaces behind that uh, are reasonable parking spaces behind the existing building. And uh, <clears throat> When the new building is put in, it'll be larger than the old building. Its foot, uh, footprint is uh, closer in front to the to uh, Gothic Street with its porch, and in back, it's uh, uh, appreciably uh, further back than the back of the existing building. So uh, <clears throat> there's also uh, only one entrance and exit, just just the same uh, driveway for both. Uh, when, when both houses exist, they just you know, come and go through the same egress. And <clears throat> I don't see how you can get in uh, more than uh, maybe three spaces behind the new building. But uh, the new building is three stories high which is uh, uh, a half a story or, two st or one story higher than the buildings to either side. <coughs> It'll be the biggest building in the area uh, on that, on that uh, block. And, uh, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> There's... Uh, talking about parking and uh, talking about cars. Uh, the number of cars that are, that are in there. Uh, <clears throat> oh, right, there's a, there's a stone wall right behind both of these buildings. And uh, along that stone wall are parked uh, seven cars in front, uh, in front of our house. We can barely get out of our house now as it is. And then we have our parking space, which is, is for four cars. Uh, and we have uh, four apartments. I believe the general idea is to have, for, for an apartment, you need to have 
or a, or a condo. You need to have uh, two uh, parking spaces. And uh, <clears throat> with the new building, the proposed building, you have six uh, uh, necessary spaces. And it is just not enough room uh, as it is for them to be there. And I assume, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, this uh, plan is uh, a maxi plan. Uh, go for three, go for three uh, apartments and uh, settle for two apartments. And uh, with two apartments, you have four spaces in the back. And maybe they could get uh, permission for that. But I don't see how uh, you can get in the inadequate number of uh, parking spaces in back of this building uh, as it stands. I think they'll have to clip off the front porch and the back porch and leave you with a, a nice big rectangle. Uh, <clears throat> I think the, the, the look of the building as it is isn't, isn't really bad, even though uh, it looks bad in the plan because of all those horizontal lines. If it was uh, in a color uh, display of the side of the building, uh, maybe maybe they should uh, get a picture of the original uh, building that was in the corner, uh, in the lower corner of the uh, of view. It, was in, it looks like it, like the example of the building, the federal style, uh, came from, say, Boston or uh, Somerville. Uh, <clears throat> and it, I don't think it is uh, a, appropriate style for, uh, as, as it's been done, for the area. Most of the buildings in that area are, are uh, one and a half to two and a half uh, stories with uh, uh, V-shaped uh, slanting uh, uh, roofs. Um, <clears throat> and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? At this time, we'll have some discussion among the board. Uh, we do keep our public hearing open because we may have some questions for the engineer or the architect or the applicant. Um, Depending on our conversation, we may invite some more public comment, um, but that's generally how we, we organize our, our meetings. Uh, so I will ask Carolyn if you could just give us She's a telling reminder of why this both yeah. site plan and special comment, um, just to help us understand, everyone on the board understand what our, our role is, what our purview is. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> so um, the um, site plan criteria is triggered because it's more than a 2,000 square foot addition as well as adding a second unit, a second um, structure on the property. Um, there are minimum open space requirements in the urban residential city district that require 30% of the parcel to remain open. Um, that is <coughs> being uh, met. There's also a minimum lot size requirement that um, needs to be met for the number of units proposed, so a total of five units um, would, um, there's one, one unit per 2,500 square feet. So um, there's actually, there is a zoning table on the um, plan set that indicates that they're um, under the minimum, um, they're just up to the minimum lot size requirements and they also meet the open space requirements for that. So that's this, the site plan piece. So the uses, the number of units in this district Next to downtown urban residential C, the total number of units um, those is those are met. Oh, those are met. Um, the special <laughs> permit <clears throat> is triggered. Uh, I'm sorry, it's also a major site plan because of the size of the project. So that's where stormwater mm -hmm. um, requirements and traffic um, uh, analysis is required. I think it's a reasonable request to, um, for the uh, waiver of the traffic study. The uh, applicant has offered to make the traffic mitigation um, uh, payment in lieu of doing traffic um, mitigation. Um, but the other piece, uh, in addition to the major site plan, um, is the stormwater analysis. So you um, got the stormwater report. DPW made comments about um, 
the stormwater system and, and recommendations for um, some slight revisions that I would recommend being put into any conditions um, <clears throat> that they also record a stormwater maintenance plan for what they proposed. I mean, sorry, that they record that maintenance right. agreement. Um, the special permit is triggered by the fact that they're asking for more than a 20% reduction in the parking. And of course, it is downtown. The board has commonly reduced parking, um, certainly up to 20% with um, um, not too much discussion. Um, this is for more than 20%, which is what's triggering the special permit. Um, you know, if they're, they're showing um, seven parking spaces on site, which would accommodate, you know, essentially residential units. Um, so then there'd be the office space um, on the first floor, which uh, many times businesses use street parking anyway in the downtown area for, for parking. Um, but that is the, that's the special permit criteria or trigger. So um, you would be evaluating the special permit for the request for parking reduction. Um, there also you would look at, I'm sorry, as part of the site plan, you do look at sort of the context of the neighborhood. There are several um, three-story and larger mass buildings on Trumbull, but also on Gothic Street. You've got 64 Gothic Street, which is quite an extensive massing. Um, there are some residential um, condominiums across the street on Trumbull that are three stories. So that, I think, fits in with the context. But all of that is part of your site plan. I was just going to say, so uh, the massing of the building, I don't have an issue with because there are representative examples close to um, the property. But so this is downtown adjacent. Uh, it's not downtown, so it's not open to architectural review board and so right. forth. Right. But because it's special permit, what leeway do we have? You know, the, the front, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the vinyl siding kind of hits me wrong because I don't know that you on Gothic Street, I don't think they're a structure that has vinyl siding. Um, but and, and we have comments at that level because it's special permit, you know, versus like a cementitious siding that's painted. Yeah. Um, would I think be more in keeping with the surrounding area than a vinyl sided building? Is that in our purview of because um, of special permit? So I think that it's, um, you know, I think that um, it's not the same level of review as a special permit for the number of units. So if it had been over six, I think mm -hmm. you'd um, probably have more design control over um, that level of detail. I think the, um, um, I think under site plan, when, you, when you're looking at fitting in with the context, I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, another key is really to, um, you know, I think you could go either way with the with the materials because I think you're right. There's um, um, most of the um, siding is either wood clapboard or right. or, um, or in some cases there may be some other cementitious um, uh, material. I think the other piece, of course, is the level of detail of those um, the window elements and the, the cornice work, which can um, um, be hard to do in um, in vinyl. Um, so I think you'd want to be. I would recommend either way. I mean, if you um, were strongly leaning towards um, cement fiberboard or something. Um, I think it would, uh, and to make it more a clabbered look, um, that would be appropriate. But I, on the other hand, you could also be very detailed about making sure those elements that are shown in the elevation um, are implemented um, and that no change from that. Because that really takes, that that is um, representative of the character that they're right. presenting. So, so you want to make sure that gets approved and then it's stripped away. It would be right. very different. Oh, sorry. Oh, <coughs> you want to go for it? Go for it. We're on the right-hand side of the <laughs> um, Yeah, I don't think it's appropriate to get into choosing materials. I, I, my recollection, we never do that. I, um, Not usually, no. Uh, it, I mean, that's 
will be decide there, there's 10 different kinds of vinyl siding will determine which of those various kinds is appropriate. I, I mean, I think that's up to the applicant, in my opinion. Um, I, I am, however, bothered by the parking issue. I, these are not only three more, well, well, let's see. First, one other thing about the massing. Mark, it's, it's true there are three other three-story buildings, but most of the others, the third floor is within the uh, pitched roof, within the gable. Here it's three full stories and a flat roof. So the, the, the scale, the mass of the building, I think, far exceeds what else is in the neighborhood. Um, and, and it's not only three more units, but I think we have to take recognition of the fact that it's 2,100 square feet per unit. There's three bedrooms, two full bathrooms. They're huge. They're, it's essentially like three houses um, stacked one on top of the other. Uh, and and a, three, a 2,100 square foot condominium or apartment, whatever, is going to have, I would think, more than one car per unit. I mean, that's, I think that's um, a dream. Um, whether they like to walk to town or not, that these are big, expensive units with a lot of living space and a lot of bedrooms. There's nine bedrooms being built on this, in this building. And I have a hard time believing that the cars, <coughs> including, of course, the existing building, um, can fit into the parking spaces. And during the day, I believe, you know, the Melnix can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe parking on the street is very crowded there. It's always filled up. And I don't know about at night, but that means that the parking burden from this building will be on the street, not on the, um, on the parking provided on the lot. So, I don't know, that's an issue for me. I'd like to say something about parking that is probably going to be, uh, that some people won't like, but I, I don't have a problem with the parking. I think it's interesting that we get very riled up about this and say this isn't how people act, but this is a private project that an applicant would be taking the risk that he or she will or will not sell this unit to someone who wants it and it, you know as crazy as it seems I mean I think people come here often and say everybody has a car everybody drives and you all know that that's not my experience you know that's not my experience in a 1600 square foot condo with two adults and one vehicle downtown it, it's not as unusual as it is for people to imagine people living here with one car that's as unusual as it is for me to imagine living out in Ward 6 with two cars and so you know it's, um, I don't think it's unreasonable to presume that, that the people who would spend the money to buy these condos will choose to do that. You know, nobody is going to be kind of forced to live in these units and then find a place for their three cars. The other thing, you know, it was only a couple years ago, I think it was maybe two and a half, three years ago that the city funded a parking study. And we discovered that there is an enormous amount of private paved parking, both in the central business district, but also kind of bleeding into this, you know, next adjacent zoning district. And, and, you know, I personally know a number of people who pay by month for private parking. If they happen to have an extra car and they need to stash it somewhere, there's, there are many different ways that people kind of manage that parking need. But I don't necessarily think it's in our purview to, to try to look into a crystal ball and, and use only our own individual experience and, and say that there's no other option. You know, it's... it's um, well, I just, on your point, uh, we assume that a household has at least a couple or children and at least two cars. Because people drive. You have to face it. But that's not necessarily the case. Well, but it's my case. I experience it. Right, right. I'm just saying I experienced the exact opposite. Yeah. So it's it, so, what we have to do is kind of balance, you know, where our experiences, you know, determine whether or not we we approve a site plan. I mean, you know, we generally know that we have a lot of asphalt in Northampton. 
you know, when we look at our satellite map, we have a lot of asphalt. There is a lot of parking. It's just inefficiently used. So I'm, a, I'm amazed that, you know, like I can think of three families who I know who would be dying to buy these condos straight away. Each family has one car and two kids. It, it's like, this would be a dream to be able to be so close to town, you know, have be able to walk and whatnot. But that's, you know, again, that's unusual, that may be unusual, yeah, but, it's unusual. It's, but it's not impossible. And, and I think that that's on the applicant to decide if they want to take the financial risk of building this kind of. I don't, I don't think it's just on the applicant. Yeah. As someone, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I, I fought continually in this last project that I, that I did with people parking illegally in front of, and, and part of it is that the city, I mean, so much of this would be solved if the city ticketed people for parking in front of your driveway within three feet of the driveway, you know, the people were polite and, but, right. you know, listen, this condo, part of the association is not going to be managing politeness, you know, that's <laughs> just, you know, that's, we just have to assume that they're going to be like everyone else in this in this area, and so I, I just think that you know we we are part of part of the parking idea. And you're right; not everyone has two cars, but is that you, and you certainly don't have a right to the parking spot in front of your house. But I I do think that asking for such a reduction is is more, I mean, it's one thing to ask for, let's say the 20%, but this is more than that. This is much more than that. And, uh, and I, and I, I just think that, you know, again, right now it's easy to imagine because there's, there's no, the, the, the snow has melted. Those streets get really, really narrow, really narrow. You know, and, but, but the other, the other thing on, on Completely separate note is that I uh, I would like to know. I mean, I, of course, I don't feel like we should be able to say what what, what siding they, they used, but but they did show a picture. The one picture that they did show as an example looked gorgeous. The uh, this picture right here, and then and then they turned around and said, no, maybe they're not going to have that. And so, and that's, so that's not what the, the elevation is what you need to look at. That's really yeah. just um, like a representative. That's not the elevation. No, no, the elevation not. is just the a representative. Yeah, right. the, just the look they're of going the architecture. I understand it's the look they're going for, but there's a huge difference between. I mean, a white, a, a white. So you're saying that if I tell, if I say a white soffit and that are the same thing. No, what you need to look at is the elevation. Was the elevation drawing show you as to what they're planning for that um, cornice? So if you're, so, um, and maybe, you know, from this going forward, if you ever see a pretty picture, that's not what they build. No. <laughs> that's a I side story. Yeah, that, 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 that I understood. I, I understood that part of it. Um, but that's why it's important to understand what's on the elevation, because they need to build what's, on, what's represented on the elevation. Yeah. Um, no matter what the siding, you have to you have approved and dictated um, siding in other projects, and I think it's important to to look at the context for that. The most recent one was the corner of Pomeroy Terrace and Bridge Street That's right. for that project, um, where the old Shaw's Hotel was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so they that was you required them to do um, party plank on that. Um, That's what I was thinking of because right. I think that's a good example where we got more so than we usually do which we kind of got into the weeds a little bit architecturally a because we could and b because we thought it was important did we dictate the kind of siding i remember that meeting yeah. the discussion i thought he agreed that or, or specified what he was discussing. he's agreeable but we most right. right so we can talk about it and find out level of in some no. interest in, in that. Yeah. I wasn't around for that particular conversation, although that development is right in my neighborhood. But I mean, I feel like we're looking at that level of specificity all the time. We're looking at Sunset, we're looking at 
Coordinating like details. Yeah. I mean, Just so uh, while we might uh -huh. not be in the business of dictating them normally, yeah. I think the applicants are certainly supposed to show that level of detail, and I'm not sure why they're showing it if we don't have the ability to comment to a certain extent, especially when yeah. we're in a case where we're it's looking at what we know or who you know. The context of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. right. Um, or just making this yeah. Well, because I feel like I'm waffling back and forth. Uh, I guess I'll, the siding detail, when they did say vinyl, I think I kind of reeled up like, really, this big of a building, you're going to put siding like that on that street? And that was a little like, I don't know that that would be the nicest thing to look at, per se, but there are vinyl sidings out there that aren't better than there others. Are there are, I agree. And the vinyl windows, I, I'm very familiar with them speak to their quality and so I, that part doesn't bother me and I found it interesting because the parking for me I was like there's just no way people are going to buy this if they don't have parking spots but Tess if you say that they're out there I can't say that they're not because I don't know everything so you know I can I'm still a little like wow do we have enough spots to make this copacetic for the neighborhood I don't I still don't know, but I do appreciate you saying, like, hey, just because you drive two cars or have two cars in your driveway doesn't mean that everybody does. So, though these are pretty big units, so. But, but the, the closer to downtown we, we've got, the more often we we give waivers of more right. than 20%. Well, the, the other thing the we intent. have the data on is the fact that there's fewer car, there's less car ownership in the downtown area than there is in the outlying area and that trend is continuing so you also may be looking at it from you know 10 20 years we're up to this point but that's not what's necessarily happening um, now that, and towards the future does that is that does that data actually is it connected to a single family in a 2,000 square foot apartment or is that data looking at a bunch of students who don't, who don't have property. Um, who live, who live it, it, I don't think it's Market that. Street. I feel like I should be offended by that statement. <laughs> 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 I don't think I'm it's that. Pleasant couple of students. I don't think it's that granular. We are, are actually doing another evaluation for more up to date um, <clears throat> um, data. Um, but it's generally taking, so it's not just. You know the apartment buildings in downtown it's a broader area yeah. yeah i would i wouldn't i'm not gonna say that i i would i'm not gonna put forth a proposal to ask that they have more parking on here but if somebody thinks that the the reduction they're asking for is too much then i think someone else could propose you know asking if the applicant could fit more parking somehow with a re jiggering of something i mean again i'm not going to ask that because i think anytime an applicant is offering to not pave over part of their parcel i i'm happy that they're not doing that so well, they're sticking a big building over there, though so that's kind of like true it. i mean right. you know i mean but again the, the more housing that we have close well, to downtown well but again it's three bedroom 2100 yeah, square units which is fine. I mean, that's great that they're being yeah. built, but those are big, this is a big building. You know, uh, uh, what that lady says that, you know, I go in to do my groceries, have to drive in. And, uh, you don't go to State Street? Huh? You don't go to State Street? No, I go in the, the co-op, <laughs> and I go in Walmart, I go in Hadley. So, and my point is that I go to downtown, on a spark, we have a dinner, but we do have to do these things, to there instead. And, you know, I'm going six years old, right? So in my 60s. And in my building, there are 70, 75. And these folks, literally, they cannot leave. If they leave their car when they are back, come back, there is no spot. They, have, they don't have how to carry their grocery. I have friends who have surgery. She didn't have even handicap part. She had to wait. I mean, you know, it, it's just. Well, so uh, I would ask that anybody who is looking at this who feels that there should be more parking spaces, we should should be asking the applicant or putting forth a recommendation for what that would look like. Well, I don't know that you would do. It may require redesigning the whole project. 
which we're not going to do. I mean, even if you shrunk the size to, you know, thousand, if you had three 1,000 square foot units, the requirement would be three, would be one right. per. So the parking so requirement is based on the square footage of the units that are being proposed, not necessarily just the number of bedrooms or, right. or the total size. So we're still at the same number of spots if we go down, like right? just the same. No, if, the, if they were smaller, if they were 1,000 square <coughs> foot, then it would be cut in half. So anything north of 1,000? Right, right. In theory. Right. right. I'm just to give my opinion. I'm I'm okay with the parking that close to downtown. I'm giving the waiver. I think that's the applicants. If if the applicant finds a buyer, good for them. And and if it's not attractive to people because they've got two cars and they don't want to fight with a parking spot on the street, then they're not going to buy. It. So it's going to be marketed to and bought by people that. Uh, don't have an issue with, with having maybe only one spot behind the building. So I've got more of an issue architecturally and I don't, you know, we've got actual fixture cuts of what the fixture is, but we don't, we don't have a cut through the, the profile. We've got a promise of a cornice and what it, a rendering of what it might look like or what the, um, you know, what it's modeled after. And the, the vinyl siding, to your point, there's, there's beautiful vinyl siding and there's bond siding not so much. And so um, if, if I had more information to feel comfortable with, I'd be, I, I wouldn't have an issue with this project at all. But I don't, architecturally, I don't have enough to. Do you, do you guys have any sense of the type of siding they want to use? Yes. Can I address the parking briefly? For sure. Yes. Uh, my thought is that this is going to be marketed that so, if somebody wants to live there, they're going to have one car that they can have at this property, if somebody wants to come in and have two cars, they're going to have to find another place to rent a car in downtown. I mean, there are other places, there are other options. There, are parking rentals on off King Street. I mean, there's <laughs> other places that you can rent a spot that have a second car. I, 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 I I'm going to be writing contract documents. I, I'm not going to guarantee two spots for each one of these units. I can't do that. And so my thought is that you're going to have one spot. You're going to have the opportunity to have one spot uh, available to you. Um, but if you want more, you, you have to, to look elsewhere. I mean, there's just, there's just not. Yeah, that's, not to get that to How many cars are typically in the parking lot now? Uh, during the day, there's more because of the the, uh, the offices. But at night, there's um, I, I can't remember if the tenant has one or two cars. But uh, you know, at night, it's just the tenant. Really. But during the day, it's during the day. There's uh, there's at least there's usually three or four. There's mostly lawyers, so if they're at court, they're at court. But they're back at the office, but they're not always there at the same time anyway. Can you talk a little bit more about sort of the character of the design, or maybe Emily can talk about the, the design itself, and you know, if there's uh, options or things. I, I've considered putting on Hardy Gourmet. I'm sure Emily would love it if I do. I have not ruled it out. I, I I'm hesitant to put it on these plans because I just don't want to get. Uh, uh, I'm just concerned with the cost of the entire project and whether or not it's feasible to do. If I can do it, I'm going to put on Hardy Board. I mean, that's what I'd like to do. That's what I'd like to see. I'm going to keep the office there. I want it to look nice. Uh, as far as the level of detail, I think the level of detail is put on there. We're not going to do less than that. We're going to do more. So the level of detail in the trim of the windows, I, I think it's fairly nice what she's proposed, and we're not going to do less than that. As far as the cornice, I think the level of detail on there is on there. It's uh, it's fairly ornate. I, I believe that's what she's proposed. And, and that's what we're planning to do. Um, but I, I can let the Emily speak to that in a little greater detail. Um, before you do that, and this may just be kind of general and helpful for all of us. It's not, it's not technical per se, but can you just talk a little bit about, in terms of your own market research, like you're thinking about these are family units, and you know, is there a particular kind of archetype buyer that you're imagining would, would be in each of these units, for, as opposed to thinking about two bedroom know units how to or drive. <laughs> <laughs> or that. Like, once again, should I be offended? Not well. I, in my own mind, I thought maybe it's somebody who's retired, um, and their kids have moved away, and they want to move downtown because they want to be closer to downtown. Um, uh, and, and, and get rid of their house, you know, outside of town, uh, or potentially a younger family who again wants to be downtown and just uh, 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 just for that reason. 
Uh, but but I don't know. I mean, I, that's just yeah. my mind. I, I've spoken to a realtor about this, but very briefly, mm -hmm. and, and I haven't really gotten that great a detail. Okay, the one thing I, you, you did just say, uh, because I I guess for me, I the, the, the parking is, there's, there's too little parking. But one of the things you did just say briefly was that you would be writing the, uh, the condo, docks. the docks. And so I would be perfectly, uh, I, me, um, would be interested if you were to come back and with a notion of what those condo documents were relative to the parking situation so that we could understand what uh, what you really what you what you're envisioning in terms of the restrictions for the park. Well, uh, alternatively, you could just say that the condo documents have to specify that only one car is provided per unit, right. and that they show that before they get a certificate of occupancy. Instead of having, instead of right. we so can't require an applicant addition. to show. Like we've in the past, we've talked about condo docs. We've. I don't think we can ask an applicant to draft them and then bring them back to us. Well, you, you yeah. could. I mean, if the issue is you want to make sure that some units don't get two and others get none, yeah. you can... Can you designate the Well, if that's the problem, I guess what I'm su suggesting is if the parking is an issue because you're concerned that, that some may lose out, if, if it's clear up front that the applicant, that the buyers know they get one space, um, then, then you know, it will be up to them to figure out what to do if they opt to have more than one car. So we could condition so, that the applicant include something in the condo docs about that? Like, are we allowed to do that? Yeah, yeah I mean, if, if they're asking for a special permit for reduction in parking, so you want to make sure that that's evenly distributed across the units. Can you designate so, the parking per unit? I would, I would not recommend you that because you have a business use there offsetting but the that's residential use. Yeah. I mean, that would be something that he would decide in, the, mm -hmm. in his condo docs. I mean, that's, I, a, that's I not the same I feel that it's appropriate for us to get into yeah. that. I, I, I guess I feel it. Just one minute. Let me finish. Um, it, um, uh, I mean, if they want to sell it so that the first buyer okay. gets all the parking mm -hmm. places, mm -hmm. I mean, that's up to them in the market. Mm -hmm. and. I don't think we should get into that, deciding whether they should assign one per unit or two per unit during the day and one at night. I mean, who knows? And I feel the same way about telling them what sort of siding to put on. I, uh, um, I just, what kind of vinyl siding? As I say, there's, I mean, Krista can, she sells vinyl siding. I, it, um, there's so many different models and types. I, I just. I don't think we get into that. I think the issue of the problem I have with parking is that the burden gets imposed on the neighborhood. If there isn't enough parking, they're going to, and there are too many cars, um, they'll park somewhere. Uh, and, you know, I guess it's the question is kind of like Tess said it is maybe that's for the marketplace to decide. Maybe someone won't buy because they're, they have two cars and don't think they'll be able to park them there. I, I don't. I'm sort of torn between whether I think we should turn it down because the neighborhood will pay the price or whether I should think, let the market decide. I have no problem in having just one parking spot. I have a problem because if it's open, it's not a sign for each unit. In the business hours, a resident leaves to the groceries and the commercial parking in or the other neighbor parking in. I mean, and they come back to, you know, to put away or he or she cannot access that. I honestly have no problem signing a parking spot to To me, yeah, to me, that would be- That's perfect. Great. If you want to make that condition, that's fine. Right? That one, you know, one for the four presidential units, and then the three for the business and, um, you know, guests or whatever at night, but that, that's perfectly fine. And what happens if a unit actually gets sold to someone that doesn't have a car? It'll re parking place will remain empty. But then they can rent it out. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, for the condominium. I mean, they decide what to do in that case, <laughs> but yeah. it's theirs, I guess, right? Yeah, I think that that's up to the condominium. But uh, so, again, again, to me, if you assign the parking, 
and the resident leave, or even the commercial leave. And so, you know, that's, I, 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 that's fine. I really have no problem doing that. I'm happy to do that. It feels to me, I mean, part of the South Street project issue, I'm sorry to bring it up, but the, the parking yeah. issue there, I think, was in part because there was a, there were mostly or all rental units, and that was part of the concern with people was that students and other people were going to be packing into yeah. this space and they were going to come with a lot of vehicles. But I agree that since these are condos and since they're obviously going to be expensive condos, that people are going to be making different kinds of decisions. and. We can't guarantee that, but I would think I'm less concerned about it here than I would be if they were these units and they were rentals. Are, won't they have just more expensive cars? <laughs> yeah. well, I, mean, I, I, I think the idea on South Street was that you're going to get you know, five students who are going to pack into an event, whatever, right. and then they're each going to have an individual car. I do not think that that is going to be the case in an owner-occupied condo. Like but but you, like can't, you can't just out. stipulate, this could turn rental and yeah. for next yeah. year. Yeah. I mean, you can't yeah. stipulate that. Yeah, I'm more comfortable with the one know. spot per two parking spaces. You mean? There you no. Three. 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 I just feel like we have a lot three of floors. Each one is three, three, three apartments. They live downtown, and I, I go to these homes and I measure three. windows three. and I do all sorts of stuff. And they work from home. And when I pull up, three apartments. Their driveway is full of cars, and when I have general conversations with them, it's like, oh, I. A professor, I remotely work and this and that, so they're not leaving. So you could get somebody that buys one of these condos, they have two spots, they're like, Well, it doesn't matter to me because I've parked there once I get it, I don't leave for a week. It's yeah. like, Okay, well, that's not exactly producing a flow of traffic for people coming and going because once you occupy those spots, if you're working for the week, you work from home. In theory, you could occupy those two, three spots if yeah. you don't say how many you're allowed to have. and Everybody else is doing that so well. No, that, that's fine. It might make it clear that they like have one car anyway. Unless they make basement. other arrangements. Right. I, I plan on making that clear anyway. I can't imagine somebody's going to come in here and have two cars all the time with right. and they don't have one water. association. It's just um, not realistic. Yeah. <laughs> a, note, a note about Stormont again? Just, um, I, I, yes, I, I was going to let Terry. Oh, sure. <laughs> Would you like to? I was just going to say something very general about storm water or broad, but if you have specific things you want to say, you know, DPW has required or uh, recommends conditioning of storm water management plan be filed and, uh, yeah. you know, so. Which is good. Yeah. It should be done. Yes. The part, part of it, it'll be re recorded. Um, and it's just standard maintenance of, you know, there's a right. catch base in the subsurface system. They need to be inspected, cleaned periodically. BPW recommended a backflow preventer, mm -hmm. um, more so not protecting per se the cities, but out of concern that that area is subject to the stormwater system backing up. Right. And I used to live right around the corner. I used to live in my own place for 15 years. And those manholes will blow right off on microbursts. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm familiar with that. And, and basically there's the Doug McDonald's position on it is, you know, this is for your own good, we recommend it. Um, so, right. um, there's some detailing I need to add to the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the comments was spot grades and stuff mm -hmm. on the plan, so we'll adjust that as a construction plan. Okay. So. Great. And just for the benefit of the public, I know there was a comment about stormwater. Um, this project does require a stormwater management plan, and, and one of our stormwater requirements is that a new development not cause any additional water to drain off the site than currently does. Right. And so that's um, the, the sort of remedy is this, this stormwater management plan. If the system isn't functioning the way that it is supposed to, um, then there is an opportunity for the city to, to enforce you know, this management plan, make sure the system is functioning properly. So there's a mechanism right. in place to, to kind of you know, make sure that um, that just because there would be another structure on what is currently grass, that it wouldn't cause anybody else's basement to flood or anything else like that. Yeah, well, I mean, part of that document basically references that you're, you're responsible to maintain it. And if right. you don't, then the city can come in and assess you. Right. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's the standard document that the so PW we, puts out. You know, we had a comment about stormwater. So yeah, thank you. Sure. That's, sure. Yeah. Um, 
We can, Emily is going to make a couple of other comments about design and. Um, it's, even though they're probably very small scaled right now, there's been a lot of thought put into that cornice. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to give a, that cornice is done at 36 inches. That's not, that's, that's a big right. piece of terrain. With, and it's all to scale one by eights in the active stock crown. Just didn't have it at a larger scale because I didn't know it was required. No, it's not. I see I, on an elevation, but there's no profile to get, you know, to compare to the, you know, the, the representation. There's just, there's no profile of it, so I can't tell the depth. It's slightly like on the, I mean, can I, am I allowed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, it, it's minimal yes. on that. Um, yeah. Now, if, if I was a personally thought this got a little fussy, right. then I mean, Which I'm, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's tasteful and it, it's fine. It's, um, just based on the what we went through, I, uh, I appreciate. Um, to me, this is similar, and so I think a similar amount of care should be taken with the details in this. Uh, and, and that was, and I don't know if you know what project we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so would you want us to continue and have a new set of? I, I don't. Drawings? I don't know that we need to continue. I just. I. I you know, if they honored this, I'm. I'm I'm not a fan of the vinyl in this neighborhood because I don't think it's in keeping with what's happening everywhere else. I mean, you um, could also condition it or pitch it, you know, see how that flies for the rest of the world. Yeah. I mean, because it seems like there's, you mentioned cost, which obviously that's a huge thing. I mean, when would you guys have a sense of when, when you know if you could, what siding you could use? I don't think we can get into asking them what. Well, no, we can't. Costs. Wait a minute. Hold a second. Okay, I disagree. Mm -hmm. So, for, firstly, because if you bring something up and then say, "Oh, but there's the cost," I mean, I can want you to do like because if you're the applicant has sort of the sort of said promised great things, but then said, "But there's a cost that can affect us." So. You can either promise the great thing and then tell us what the cost is, or don't promise us any of it and then we will say what we're going to say. But you can't have it both ways, and that's what they're having. So let's like, first of all, that's well, that is exactly what is happening right now, and that's why it's important to know, like, what. That's why I'm asking. Well, when will you know? And I'm not saying that we have to say that the project can't go forward, but you can't say one and then say, oh, well, because I guarantee you with my projects, oh, well, that, I mean, just like what happened with the, uh, with the, uh, that low income project or the, the housing that we decided that didn't happen. Well, they just decided at the end that they just couldn't afford it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we need to know what we're agreeing to is what you're saying. Yeah. So yes. what's, what's guaranteed and what's possible depending on how things proceed from here. Well, I think they, you know, to sh sort of shortcut it, you can say, this is what we want to see. You presented this plan and you have to implement it. And whatever the material is, is their decision, but it has to be as presented in the elevations, not the, not the photo of something that's similar. If I may. Uh, I, I was, I wanted to do Hardy Port anyway, if that's going to hold you guys up. I, I just don't want to get to a point where I can't afford to do it at all. I'm just going to scrap it. As far as to answer I mean, your question, to get these plans together is fairly expensive. To get the, the full set of plans involved an engineer, much more work, I believe, on Emily's part. I mean, it, it's, mm -hmm. and, and at that point, they can price it all out with you. Yeah. you know, probably Arctic Miles and um, whoever we're going to use, and, and, and then I can figure out how much it's all going to cost. I, 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 like I said, I want to be hardcore, I want to make it nice. That's going to hold this up. I'll just either have to make it work or I won't do it. I mean, that's the reality. So, are you saying you'd be comfortable if we conditioned it? If you condition it up. Either build a project with it or I just won't do it. I just want to say, I'm still opposed to, impo mm -hmm. to putting on that condition. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bad precedent, mm -hmm. I don't think it's any of our business. I was thinking it's not a precedent, though. We've already done it. 
That's yes. that's what I'm falling back on. Yeah. That this is very this is very similar. I think to when what we, we did, did that, that was a bad mistake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, um, it, if we do it now, I that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. If we do it, if we impose it now, we certainly will feel more comfortable doing it next week or next month or the month after. And I don't think we should. Well, I think. Well, I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Alan. I, I do think that that's, that is, it's important for us to remember that this is, that we're having a conversation with the applicant, that we aren't the Central Business Architecture Review Board, that we don't have the authority to impose something or deny a permit based on somebody's, you know, refusal to do X, Y, or Z, or, you know, but, but I think in this case, because there's been back and forth with the architect and the applicant, and there's, and it's something the applicant was already considering that it isn't it isn't setting up a precedent that we think that this is now part of our purview on every project i mean i don't right. feel that way but I, I do think that like from my perspective if it were a trade-off between you know you had x amount of money to do the project with hardy board and it were and each unit were 100 square feet smaller you know and we'd say yes i'd rather see a slightly smaller building with nicer materials than maximizing the square footage for example you know it's a, so I don't I don't think anybody here feels that we now kind of have this new authority to kind of you know engage in these design considerations um, no but I think spe but, special permit allows us to have the conversation right. and I think going back to the Shaw's Motel you know some people <clears throat> think that came out great some people have different opinions but specific to the vinyl siding versus cementitious I look at that and say we, we got that right it certainly looks to me visually a lot better than it would have if that was vinyl sided. And so now I look at this in a similar light right. and say we have that opportunity based on precedent. And so, and the applicant is willing to do it. So I would say I, I'd be in favor of making it, a, approving and making that a condition. Why should we ever approve a project with vinyl siding? Well, a lot of times it's it's not in our purview. It's a, it's a site plan oh, review. They no, need to any, set back. Anytime we can. Wouldn't the well, same if it's in keeping apply? with it, it, it or in the neighborhood, in one neighborhood. thing that just jumps out at me here is there. I don't. I don't think on Gothic Street there's another vinyl-sided building. I mean, next door it was at 64. I mean, it's a, it's a big mass, but it's all painted and it's you know it's wood. I think it's wood. Um, and so to me, it's not. That's what. That's the genesis of that. That that vinyl siding isn't in keeping with what's in the neighborhood. And so. And then on top of that, what we did at, at Shaw's Motel, I think, was, you know, a, a painted product, cementitious or whatever, wood or whatever, yeah. would be more in keeping with, this is um, and would, I'd be more inclined to approve. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we're making a judgment call about vinyl being terrible in all right. contexts and all neighborhoods, right. but in this particular context, we're looking mm -hmm. at masking and character of the neighborhood. It helps us meet those goals and meet other goals of the city with infill and building housing downtown, which we want to do if this were out somewhere else where there are a bunch of other right. vinyl houses that we probably yeah. wouldn't have there and it would be appropriate to condition it because then it wouldn't be in keeping with the neighborhood. Right. Yes, sir. There is a vinyl sided house right beside it. I I the, 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 white, the white house is vinyl sided. Okay. It's vinyl oh. and it's vinyl. It's also not three stories. If it, if it makes it easier, I, I can just amend my proposal to the new Hardy board. Thank you. Stretch this out long. He's giving it <laughs> two parking spaces. <laughs> 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 How late can we stay? Lock the door. Lock the door. Lock the door. Can we talk about the sidewalk? And somebody brought up the issue of the curbs. I'm assuming that that would be fixed as I mean, that we're going to, I'm assuming that we're going to require those sidewalks in place anyway, and that the curbs have to be a part of that. That's DPW's recommendation, is that right? <coughs> right. Well, so in the application, they, uh, they're sh um, showing replacement of the Gothic Street segment with the, the um, granite curb. That's the standard in the city. Also, there's a um, non compliant ADA ramp at the corner. So they are right. showing that. And then they were just showing patchwork or a section up by the driveway to replace on the Trumbull side. So um, I think that it, um, um, so this is really just about the gap between the corner and the driveway and then on the other side of the driveway going. And 
So is that gap sidewalk only or sidewalk and curb on the Trumbull? Um, well, there's a tree belt um, on the Trumbull side, so it would really just be sidewalk. Okay. okay. So it wouldn't be a granite curb right. per se. Except at the driveway entrance. Right. That would be so, how many parking spaces are proposed? Seven. There are seven, seven spaces. So, that would mean, by my uh, estimation, I've seen the place every day for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the maximum they have in the existing house is five right behind it. Right. So, and they, so that would be two more for. Uh, behind for, what is proposed to be built yeah. so further away from Trumbull Street two more assigned for three apartments or condos no, no, no. no so of those seven each of the apartments the, that would what would be three new ones plus the existing would each have an assigned space one space so there would be an assigned space for, for each residential unit, and then those remaining ones would be also be used for commercial or for visitors at night or guests okay. or what have you. And, you know, and that's despite the fact that there, in each of the new new condos, there are three bedrooms. Correct. Yeah. So that's probably at least nine people. We don't know. No, they're they're going to have offices instead. No, no, they will be resident. They would be I mean, residential. Yeah, an, they would, an office in the bedroom. Right. They wouldn't be able to act to operate a commercial business out of. They may be people who work from home. That's certainly possible. I think there are a lot of people in town who do that. Um, Could be a guest bedroom. Right. Right. Um, Shannon, were you raising something else? Other than side. Well, somebody just mentioned the curving of Trumbull, but right, I right. Okay, that. so yeah, so this is not talking about granite curving the yeah. entire length. So is it appropriate to make a motion to close the public hearing? How do do other board members feel like you have information in order to make a determination? Yeah, I do. Would you like to make that motion, Al? Move we close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Would you like to discuss it? <laughs> no. So I don't know if you want me to run Not through. I incorporated some of the DPW comments and yep. the, um, conditions. I'd be happy to run through yeah. the ones that I would recommend to you, and if obviously there are others that you want to consider. Um, prior to issuance of the building permit, final plan should be submitted to include all conditions within um, work performed, including <coughs> sidewalk replacements and repair permits. Should be signed and sealed by Massachusetts Register of PD um, and submitted to DPW at least 15 days prior to issuance of any construction permits. Um, construction plans should include specifications for proposed grading of the parking lot, including the contours and spot elevations for the subsurface system um, and location of inspection ports for the stormwater subsurface system. Um, <coughs> Uh, the applicant must record an executed stormwater operation and maintenance and inspection agreement that includes a long-term operation and maintenance schedule as uh, proposed for the system, long-term stormwater maintenance program um, needs to be revised um, and approved by DPW, was attachment A to this agreement, um, black backflow prevention valve um, should um, be installed, no dumpster should be located on site prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy as offered by the applicant, um, submission of a one-time payment of $3,000 to offset incremental traffic impacts created by the new project shall be submitted to the city and then tree replacement shall be um, completed um, as a combination of on-site planting and payment to the city's tree replacement fund for a total of 21 inches of calendar. And that's all I have. I will make a motion uh, to approve the request by Patrick J. Melnick, Jr., Zoe Zechner for special permit major site plan to construct a three-story presidential club residential building uh, with more than 20% reduction in parking at 76 Street near Hampton, Massachusetts.
FID 31B-188 with the following provisions. Prior to issuance of a building permit, final plans shall be submitted to include all conditions herein, include work to be performed, including sidewalk replacement for the entire frontage lengths of Trumbull and Gothic. You mentioned the uh, one-time payment for 3,000, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, including the DPW comments, including uh, the condo docks will stipulate only one parking space per unit and including the use of cementitious siding or paintable siding versus uh, the vinyl siding that was initially shown. And something about the uh, building when it's shown on these elevations? Yeah, well, they're bound by that anyway. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Is there a Is second? Yes. I'll second. I'll second. Kristen, all those in favor? Opposed? There it goes. <laughs> Opposed or in favor, Alan? Yeah. Abstains? Uh, just a horizontal line. With great conflict, I'll vote for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have some additional business, so if folks would like to chat, we ask that you do that outside. Good luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. We have ARs and we have minutes. We have minutes. I approve the minutes. I vote we take the minutes. Second. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Yes. Yes. I didn't think we did. All I don't think we did either. We approved them. We just approved them. It was last week. Oh, it was last week. It was last week. It was last week. Yes, we approved both of them. Yes, we approved both of them. I would choose myself. And Jenna. I object. Yes. And we have a lot of the road in our. We have two in This is. At the old swimming um, hole, yeah. Um, Little Falls. Lavender Road and Drury Lane. There's a little house uh, with a tiny parcel. Is this in Massachusetts? It's a Mass State Plain coordinates. <laughs> um, so they're carving off a piece that's not buildable on its own, but it'll be added to this house lot so they have more room to expand on the back. Hmm. Um, so it's, um, there's already, there's no new house lot that's being created. It's just swapping land or selling land to be a better. Would anyone like to make endorsement of that ANR? So moved. Acceptance? Is that what we have? Endorsement. endorsement. So moved a second. Yuri? Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. Okay, one more. Thank you. <laughs> this one, actually, you already approved the one. It's a very small one. <laughs> it's actually the part I always get confused if it's approved. So it's approval not required. required. Well, like, why are we going through it if it's not required? Why can't you just, the staff say, yeah, it's fine. That's what we're doing. We're endorsing that yeah. she can do that. Yeah. Oh, great. So that's you exactly. have to vote yeah. on the fact that it's not, <laughs> that it's not, that it doesn't require a subdivision because either it has legal frontage, which is the standard, or it's just a transfer of land and there's no new building lot being created. In this case, I can certainly pass this around, but this is part of the uh, Willard redevelopment site. You guys right. already endorsed the A&R for the um, mm. uh, solar. production, no marijuana production. Uh, oh. This is the solar piece, actually. So oh, okay. the marijuana piece was over here. That a &R already came in. This one is. Um, this will be the solar um, lot. It does not have frontage because frontage isn't required in this district for solar. Um, but it's also carving off this piece that um, the solar developers are giving to the city for open space. So mm -hmm. up um, sort of abutting those homes that are on Ryan Road mm -hmm. and Parsons Brook. So um, they're um, gonna be, uh, they need this a &R to do the deal with the city to give the land to the city, but also to start construction of the um, solar array. So that's what this one is. So, okay. 
Is there a second? Yeah. Gary, all those in favor of endorsing? Yeah. Anyone opposed? No. Sam. <laughs> I'm not opposed. <laughs> so uh, in favor of it. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm thinking a lot about it. Uh, and that's all I have. All right. Good. And who would like to make the best motion? Uh, motion. Make a motion to Time close to go home. this meeting. And um, adjourn it? Adjourn it. On, uh, Is there a second? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? No.